Welcome, the War Chief of Light is back with the epic video. Hi, my name is PBG, but you lovely people are more than welcome to call me Peeps. And today, we are talking about World of Warcraft's biggest problems for new and returning players. Especially if you're into story. So let me be straight up. I've come back to Warcraft casually. When I say casually, listen, I play it when I feel like it, here and there. Okay? And... I've noticed something that I never noticed before, which I had blinders on. When you play this game hard for a long time, you don't catch a lot of the shit that other people are missing or they don't understand. Or... So this opened my eyes. And what I noticed is new and returning players are screwed if you want to understand anything going on in this story. And it's getting worse, not better over time. Now I know that it's no secret, but let's look at why it's getting worse, what happened, and what we can do to fix it, because fixing it is actually pretty easy and not that expensive to do. So let's look at it quickly. The new player experiences, you get Tutorial Island. Honestly, I even made a video about it way back when, and then I played it, and it's great. It's fantastic. It teaches you how to use the UI, what questing looks like, gives you a little bit of background story, like, I mean, little. It also shows you your first dungeon. What's that supposed to like? Oh no, you killed the bad guy. What the major city looks like. Like, you get a good idea walking in on how to play this game, which is great. I love that, okay? When they first built this, they're like, this will create player retention, which fair, right? Players know how to play a little bit faster than they did before. Remember vanilla? You, you pretty much had to Google it or hope for the best. Learn on the fly. That didn't work out for us. I'm not going to lie to you. Either way, they thought it would help with that. And it did for a certain part, but after taking two years off between Shadowlands and half of Dragonflight, even that little time getting back into it and understanding what the fuck's going on was hard. I remember hearing somewhere, I don't remember where, so I can't credit it. If you know, comment section, because I want to credit somebody who said this, but I don't know who said it. But whoever said it said this, World of Warcraft assumes you know the main players. It assumes you've played this game. It assumes you know who the green guy is. You know who the king is. You know who Jaina Proudmoore is. You know the dragons. It assumes you know all of that walking in. It also assumes that you want to play with your friends. That's all you want to do. And they assume that they need to get you to the end, playing with your friends right away. That's the best way to make you a long time player. That's how you'll get there. Everything else in between, we'll figure it out. But right now, I need you playing with your friends at the top end, rating, etc, etc, etc. So, new players walking in are like, okay, great, I want to play this game my friends were talking about. Who's this person? Why are they angry? This person just came on screen with some big music. Is that supposed to be a reveal? Oh, it is. Okay, who are they? You're going to spend a lot of fucking time Googling. And returning players, there's a lack of context, right? You don't know what happened previous expansions, if it's been a while. You barely know what's going on in the current expansion and we're going to discuss that too. To me, the only people who actually understand what's going on in Dragonflight, okay, is someone who A, hasn't stopped playing, didn't take a break, they're going, or B, played Dragonflight at the beginning of Dragonflight. When it was live, you were playing it. And that's great, good for you. Those of us who came in after, the experience wasn't so good. So why? Now the Dragonflight type questing really started in Battle for Azeroth. Before that, you played through the zones, and yeah, there was some story beats at the point one, point two, point three, point four, five. However, you had to look for them or know where they were at. Okay, they were just a they were just an exclamation point. That's it. Too bad you missed them. You didn't know what was going on. You should have did all the quests, obviously. BFA launched a MSQ, main story quest. So when you opened your quest log on top, it said, hey, you're at part one of seven, this part. So you could go out and find that next one. Your quest line became linear. 
you could follow the story from moment one to moment five without issue. And I'm not going to lie to you, excellent. I was so happy for this change. Again, you don't miss anything. And new players walking in just has to follow the line. It's really not that complicated. And from there, as you can imagine, it all went downhill. Shadowlands offered some cool stuff. Shadowlands offered a different looking quest marker to tell you, hey, this is a main story quest. You should totally be doing this, which is great. It also added little markers on the map on where to go, which some people like them, some people don't. I like them. But what Shadowlands then offered was something called Renowned, a new reputation system, which is all right. However, the story, the next portion, was behind Renowned. You needed to reach Renowned 10 to find out what happens next. I am both for and against this because one, it slows down the progression. So people aren't absorbing all of the content on day one, which there are some people that do. People absorb animals like lemmings. Thing. So it limits that behavior. And two, it kind of makes sense, right? You're in a new place, new area. These people don't know you. They're not gonna trust you with all their secrets and questing. So it's not a crazy idea that you, they have to get to know you a little bit, right? However, if you were stuck at 10 and had to leave for three months and came back, now the quests are up to 50 and you have to catch up and that's a you problem. They did correct this in their last patch because you didn't require the Renown to get that next part of the story, but I mean, a pain. And then, Dragonflight. Dragonflight's entire .0 patch or beginning base game once you get to the zones and you unlock everything it's all behind renown and it's still behind renown if you start today you're gonna walk in there and you can't get past a certain part until you get your renowned up which is questing world quest blah blah and it ain't that easy and then the next problem that with, with dragonflight is when you get into dragonflight as a new player I started when 10.2 dropped, so like not that long ago really. So when I got into Dragonflight, I was questing, I was doing good, I was learning about the blue Dragonflight, which my god that quest was good, okay? Content was great, but it kept popping up, hey do you want to go to the Emerald Dream? And I'm like, no, I want to know what happens next. Hey, this is the what's happening next. I'm not there yet, because again, Blizzard's motto of get the players to the end quicker was in play. I did not know what was going on, but I'm being pushed to the end. So I stuck to 10.0 until I hit the renown block. I then did 10.1, which again, that was really good. I like the black dragon flight. I like that stuff. I, I found it a little short, but that's okay. It wasn't bad. 10.2, excellent great patch as it's coming out fantastic i don't know who eritochron ferrock and verena venerith the ice one i don't know who the fuck they are i was only starting to d to get their story in point oh i was only starting to realize they were a problem ferrock was new to me when i hit 10.1 i was like oh fire guy cool Great, who are you? Oh, I'm gonna Google you. That's not the way to do stuff. Like, it's not linear anymore. And a new player, again, you're getting stuff screaming, hey, go to the Emerald Dream. You're gonna be like, fuck yeah, absolutely. The game's telling me to go there. So obviously that's where I need to go. But if you wanna know what's going on, well, don't go there. Enough bitching, let's fix this. Because there's three things that will fix this, and the third one is hard. Okay, and I get that, so we're going to talk about that one last. But the first two are cheap and easy. Number one, a TLDR. Uh, this is something I've been talking about for years. If you've been on my channel, you have heard me talk about this and hear me out. What if 
you had a character, a lore walker of sorts, a panda. It doesn't need to be a panda, but I like the pandas. I'm a little bit biased, but somebody. Come up to you at the beginning of the expansion. One of the first things you do for walking into an expansion, whether you just bought it, whether it's been out for six months, if you're walking into it, here's the lore walker. And then you get a one to three minute video, a silly recounting of who the main players are, who the baddies are, what's going on, maybe a little bit of backstory to give context, and that's it. Short, sweet, can almost make a TikTok. You could do this for every expansion. It doesn't need to be complicated. It doesn't need to be so deep. Again, think about it for Dragonflight. You remember Alexstrasza, the queen of the dragons, the soul binder, the life bringer. Well, here she is in all her glory after going through so much crap. I mean, everything from her brother, Naltharian, or Deathwing, betraying her, and the black dragonflight leaving their friendship. And you know, remember, there's like videos, this shit showing up in the background. But finally, her ancestral home opened up, and she's heading home to reunite the dragons and fix the internal problems that they have. Along the way, y you see where I'm going? Again, think of Blizzard Magic in the background with like pictures of Alex Strauss and her greatness and all that stuff. One to three minutes. It's That would be it. You would get the point. A new player would be like, okay, so I know this one, I know that one. And when this one shows up on the screen, great. I get it. That's all they need. I'm also argue that this should be replayable. You should be able to go into like a lore house or a house of lore or something in all the cities and be like, hey, Lore War Cacho, can I listen to this one again? Great. Number two we need. We need a linear story. We do. And for the most part, they get this. And again, I'm not against the renown system. However, hear me out. Let me argue. What if when a patch was done, the need for renown died. There's no reason someone from 10.0 who's going through the story should have to boost that renown. You want your players at the end. However, I don't want to miss anything. The solution's pretty fucking easy here. Removed it. Again, and if you did this for the old patches, the old expansions, People would play it. They'd have no problem. They'd be like, okay, quests 1 through 10, let's go. I want to find out what happened to BFA that created the Shadowlands. Don't do that. You see what I mean? That, that would be there for players. You're adding, you're making your content evergreen. Players can go back and relive it if they want to. And again, that's the point of World of Warcraft. That's how World of Warcraft works. World of Warcraft is a game that you can pick up pretty easy. Will you get everything going on? No. The story is pretty surface level for the most part, but if you want to know more, the quests, the books really give you a bigger world. So the player that wants to know more can go back to BFA and do it all left to right. Get some achievements, get some background, learn more about some cool characters. So yeah, kill the renowned, make it linear. And number three, this is the hard one. This is the one that I'm going to get pushed back on. And it's Blizzard needs to change their mindset. Yes, there is a subset of players that once you get them leveling and playing with their friends, they'll raid, they'll do their PvP, and they'll be great, and you'll never hear from them again. They'll be lifetime customers. Fantastic. However, with the new shift in mentality that is happening over there, let players play the game like they want to. Do you have a lore buff who likes to play RPGs? Well, you're selling an RPG. Let them. It's good. Because again, you made your product evergreen. So the player that's bored at the end of an expansion can go back and be like, cool, I've never done Cataclysm. I wonder what the story for that's like. And actually do it. The mindset that this is the way we want our players to play needs to die. Let the players lead their own adventure. So I rambled, but the reality is returning players and new players need a better experience. And one that doesn't feel either overwhelming, confusing, you shouldn't have to Google a game to know what's going on. I'm sorry, you shouldn't. And there's still some work to be done. It's not impossible, but 
we've outlined a few steps that could actually like fix quite a lot of the problem. Either way, I would love to know your thoughts on this. What do you think would help the new player experience? Let me know in the comments. If you like videos like these, you like getting nerdy, you like talking about all this stuff. Listen, we're in the right spot. Subscribe, ring the bell, watch a few. We live stream where I talk about this live and I play all kinds of games. Final Fantasy XIV is my number one right now. We're having a ball, you know. All right, well, thank you so much for being here. Have a legendary night and I can't wait to see you guys again on the next one. I'm going to go even further, okay? And to me, every single expansion, including vanilla, should have an MSQ. Being a storyline where you can follow it left to right. I mean, it would be like a Kata revamp. Like, huge. All the way across the board. Wait. Is that the devs cursing my name? Oh. I gotta go. Maybe I'm a